What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Angelo's World. Welcome or welcome back to my world. Today we're going to be reacting to the infamous gauntlet roller coaster disaster. The infamous death of Harry Matthews by um, Disaster Thon True Heart. Man, let's see what happens, y'all. Smash that like button and let's get straight to it. I want my father's death to serve as a graphic as a graphic example to other companies that health and safety in the workplace should be paramount concern should be a paramount concern all the time and it came from Andrew Matthews his son When opened in 1983, Camelot theme park in Lancashire, England immediately began drawing massive crowds. Camelot was a King Arthur themed amusement park where visitors of all ages enjoyed everything from medieval jousting tournaments and a petting zoo to go-kart racing and exhilarating rides with dramatic names like the Excalibur, Tower of Terror and the Gauntlet. Located in the village of Charnock Richard, about 25 miles northwest of Manchester, the park covered nearly 150 acres, employed more than 400 workers, and hosted nearly half a million visitors each year. Camelot had a good safety record early on, but tragedy struck in 2001 when an employee was killed in front of stunned visitors waiting to board one of the park's most popular roller coasters, known as the Gauntlet. So, let's talk about it. This is the Gauntlet Roller Coaster Disaster. By 2001, the gauntlet had become one of Camelot's main draws, but it wasn't added until 1989 as part of the park's new land of the brave attraction. Park operators originally planned on installing an even larger roller coaster, but their application was denied by local authorities for unknown reasons. However, the Italian-made Pimfari ZL42 was already in use all over the world, and it was popular with operators and amusement park enthusiasts alike. The ZL42 was safe, reliable and affordable, and it's surprisingly a small footprint which meant that additional rides could be set up around it. Park visitors liked it because it was fast and exhilarating, and with a capacity of 600 riders per hour, wait times were generally short, even during the peak summer season. Shortly after it was erected, the new ZL42 coaster was named the Gauntlet. The impressive new machine stretched more than 350 meters from end to end featured a fully inverted loop in the middle and ran three separate trains that carried 12 passengers each. Each stomach churning ride lasted around 62 seconds and many park riders were so thrilled with the experience that they immediately got back in line to do it all over again. Monday, October the 22nd, 2001 wasn't a particularly busy day by Camelot theme park standards. The weather had cooled and the big summer crowds were long gone. But by early afternoon, a small group of visitors eagerly waited for their turn to board the gauntlet. Meanwhile, 59-year-old park employee Harry Matthews from nearby Wigan was informed that a portion of the gauntlet's track needed lubrication. With nearly 25 years of mate... So he wasn't even... Damn. He was a worker. He wasn't even... Damn. experience under his belt, Matthews was no stranger to routine track maintenance like lubrication. In fact, track lubrication was generally a quick and easy job, and Matthews' preparations included little more than grabbing a bucket of grease and visibly checking to make sure that none of the coaster's trains were in sight before making his way onto the track. Protocol and common sense dictate that roller coaster maintenance can only be performed when the ride is shut down, right. but little known to his visitors, the park had been cutting corners for years. The truth was that management and the staff had been dodging bullets for years and cutting corners, disregarding safety precautions. But on that day, the park's look was about to change when Matthews got caught up in his work, became oblivious to the danger around him, 
and was hit by a barreling train while stunned onlookers, including children, watched in horror. After the initial impact, Matthew's body slumped down under the train's front axle and acted like a brake that brought the unit to a stop. He was dragged along the track. Shock's co-workers immediately hit the roller coaster's kill switch and rushed to Matthew's aid, but his lifeless body had been horribly mauled and was still trapped beneath the train. Emergency services arrived on the scene at 2pm, but by then, Matthews had already passed away. Witnesses were so traumatised by what they had seen, they were offered free counselling. What the fuck? Bro. That's fucking... How does that even... Damn, bro. Rest in peace, Harry Matthews, man. Right away. And even the experienced first responders described the scene as gruesome and horrific. The park was immediately shut down, while regulators and investigators were tasked to figuring out how such a routine maintenance job could have ended in such grisly horror. The local police and health and safety executives launched an investigation immediately following the death of Harry Matthews. With the incident still fresh in everyone's mind, they quickly discovered that the safety had been little more than an empty buzzword in the busy park, and that there was a culture of carelessness and indifference which had grown over time. Things had gotten so bad by 2001 that employees like Harry Matthews commonly worked on rides whilst they were in operation, despite clear warnings from manufacturers and various workplace regulations that explicitly prohibited this practice. I mean, but at the same time, though, isn't it like common sense to... work on a ride while when it stopped like i'm just like i'm just thinking because it's like how else would you work on a ride you know especially something like that like you got to change the oil how are you going to change the oil when something's running you like, are y'all, do, do, you, do you, you get me? How are you supposed to change something like that when it's running? Damn, bro. Surprised by what they had found and concerned that the conditions might be similar at other theme parks around the country, the health and safety executive established a working group to look into the matter further and make recommendations where necessary. With their family tragedy making front page news across Britain, Matthew's family began advocating for stricter rules and more accountability for companies that put profits and ease of operation over worker safety. Andrew Matthews said to an interviewer, I want my father's death to serve as a graphic example to other companies that health and safety in the workplace should be of paramount concern all of the time. Ironically, Andrew Matthews stated that his father had expressed concerns about troubling safety issues at the park just a few weeks before his death. During the proceedings that followed, park owner Prime Resorts Limited pleaded guilty to a number of charges, including failing to show proper care for an employee's well-being and failing to periodically carry out risk assessments. Prime Resorts attorney said the company deeply regretted the death of one of its most skilled and respected employees, adding that they'd take a far more proactive approach to safety in the future by putting into place new policies and procedures and submitting to regular audits by an independent safety consulting firm. The park was then also fined £40,000 for breaching safety regulations. Andrew said, The fine doesn't reflect the death of a man, but hopefully it does send out a signal that employers have to be made aware of their responsibilities. My father's actions have been exonerated. It was a total system failure. If a robust management system had been in place, the whole sorry event would have not happened. Harry Matthews was well liked by family members and co-workers alike, most of whom described him as a gentle, fair and mild-mannered man. The Gauntlet roller coaster remained in continuous service up until 2002, after which he experienced a considerable downtime due to routine and unscheduled maintenance issues. Owners then fully refurbished the coaster, upgrading its braking systems and giving everything a fresh coat of paint. 
The new and improved gauntlet operated safely and efficiently for a few more seasons and thankfully never had any incidents as serious as this one. By 2012, the once thriving family focused theme park was shut down. Although many theme park accidents are due to mechanical failures, this one can be attributed to poor maintenance and outright neglect, both of which are often seen as cost cutting measures by an industry where costs are high and profit margins can be razor thin. Incidents that happen when a company puts profits over people should never happen. And I hope if Harry's family see this, they are doing better today. As always, let me know what you think below and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. See, I'm, it's sad, but I'm just thinking logical. Wouldn't it be logical to wait until the ride is completely off and everything, at, like after the day is over, whatever, the, or at, before they get back on the ride, whatever, to, but wouldn't it be logical to stop? To wait until the ride is officially stopped to do what you had to do. Not while it's going. You know, it's just like, I don't know, man. But, rest in peace, Harry Matthews, man. That's sad, bro. Rest in peace, Harry Matthews. I hope his family, like he said, I hope his family is doing well today, man. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, smash that like button. Comment down below if you guys would like me to react to more of these because he has a lot of them. Um, and any other videos you guys would like to see, comment them down below. And smash that subscribe button. Turn on that post notification bell so you don't miss any other videos. And make sure to check out my very last video, Michael Jackson's 1991 MTV performance is going to be right here. Go check that out. And I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm out. Peace.